In this video we're going to be installing and setting the pressure reliefs on a Danfoss valve that runs half the hydraulic system on a Terex cone crusher. So we've gone ahead and brought a new valve from our supplier. We got it for a good price. The old one was leaking and the spools were sticking. It's been resealed before and we just thought it's not worth the hassle and went and brought a new one. Highly recommend zip tying the hoses before pulling it apart. That way you can put it back together real quick and you don't have to try and trace each line to remember where it went. I've capped them all off because that's going to be important because we're going to run this without the hoses attached to it so we can set our pressures right so need to cap it off from the start we need to cap off the new valve with steel fittings and caps as well um, you can see the valves well marked you can see pressure tank load sense pilot pressure um, it comes with good instructions so you know where to set your valves and where everything goes we need to have a look at our machine manual to find the hydraulic schematic so we can set our pressures correctly. This is what the hydraulic schematic looks like and you can see we've got two splices here and we are on the right side. And the way you work out what side you are is because you just need to have a look at what implements you're running. We're running a, um, a feeder belt and a loo pump. So max 360 bar that's what we can set the valve to uh, that also is for the right hand track uh, the feeder belt we need to set that to 180 bar next we have our feed conveyor cylinder we need to set that to 100 bar and last we set the motor that runs the lube pump uh, to 100 bar one thing you've got to be aware of when setting uh, pressure relief valves is standby pressure and where your uh, gauge is. So our gauge is going to be at the um, test port um, that way we just put the gauge on one spot and we can do all the settings but you, we need to add 30 bar on top of each reading we get um, to get the right pressure. So 360 would be 390, 180 would be 210, 100 would be 330 uh, 130 on our gauge at our test point uh, it, it'll make sense in a minute when I put the the gauge on but the other way to do it is just at your port your A or B port you have a fitting there so you can a attach your pressure gauge directly to that and that and then when you activate the spool you're getting the exact pressure that's going to be going to that motor that's fine I prefer to do it this way I find it easier and less mucking around but if you use the test port, um, you have to be aware of standby pressure, which is 30 bar on this system. I've gone ahead and hooked up our pressure in from the pump and returned the tank. They're, they're the main ones for the valve. There's also the load sense line down the bottom there that's hooked up. We're going to be manually detenting this valve with a lever. That way we can um, just do it all by hand, all in the one spot. And we have to remove those black caps. Now my pressure gauge reads in PSI, so I've gone through and converted bar into uh, PSI so I can read the gauge properly. Uh, you can see I've added those together, the 30 bar standby pressure. And for the last one is 300 bar. Now it did say 360 on the schematic but I got a little reason for doing that and I'll talk about it later so this is my cool little store pressure gauge it works quite well this is the test point that we're going to measure off this is the one where we need to compensate for our standby pressure it hooks directly on like that just wind it on An important step that I'm going to cut out, what you need to do is you need to warm the machine up and have the oil at operating temperature to set this valve. I would recommend at least above 40 degrees. So with the engine on and running at high idle, 
uh, you can see the pressure is a little bit lower than what I thought the standby pressure was going to be but that's still in tolerance you're allowed a few bar either side and now we can start setting pressures so we hook our lever on and pull it all the way up till it stops and push it all the way down and we'll get the relief pressure for each uh, port show up and you can see each port has its own relief valve and we just set them by winding them in or out uh, I think both had to come down uh, the problem with uh, digital hydraulic gauges are they're extremely accurate and it's very hard to get an exact number with hydraulics um, as long as you're within a couple of percent you're on the money just going to knock a few psi off uh, what I originally calculated just because the standby pressure is a bit lower than I thought we were aiming for 1885 and we're just under that so that's going to work out good so we go through and do each splice one by one moving on to the lift cylinder next uh, you can see I'm wearing a glove highly recommend that if you get oil shoot out of a fitting or something for whatever reason uh, at least you're protected somewhat hydraulic injections pretty bad you definitely don't want that on to the third part of the splice that runs the feeder belt uh, this one's got to go up in pressure not down like the other ones you can see they're not set for what you want and you really do have to go through and set them one by one last one to do is the relief valve that sets the max pressure for the entire valve now I have not set that as high as what the schematic recommended far from it and the reason I do that is because I'm trying to preserve the belts that run the hydraulic pumps they run off the engine via a wedge belt to the pump and if people track the machine roughly try and spin on the spot or walk over stuff they shouldn't you end up holding the pump over over relief for a long time so at max pressure and uh, the pumps uh, the belts have a shorter life then and you have to replace them more often and if you just set the pressure a bit lower the machine will walk fine you just have to think about how you walk it you can't just walk over anything most people don't even notice and it doesn't affect the crushing side of things any implements um, that the machine uses during crushing they don't require oil at that high pressure so crushing side's fine and you'll find your hydraulic pump belts will last a hell of a lot longer if you have any questions leave them in the comment section below and if you enjoyed this video like and subscribe to my channel